Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today, we're going to talk about how to answer a question regarding labs. So you are to perform an experiment investigating the conservation of mechanical energy involving a transformation from initial gravitational potential energy to translational kinetic energy. You are given the equipment shown. All the supports require to hold equipment and a lab table. On the list, indicate each piece of equipment you would use by checking the line next to each of them. So, it depends on your setup. So, you might need a track. You're not sure. You might need a card. That's possible. You, you could use a string, a meter stick, a balance to measure the mass, the stopwatch to measure the time. You may need some of masses, a lightweight, low friction pulley. You might need all of them, as a matter of fact. So you can just check all of them because you could potentially, potentially need all of them. Part B, outline a procedure for performing the experiment. So how are you going to perform this? Not just procedure, you need to indicate a diagram of the experimental setup. Labeled equipment in your diagram also include a description of the measurements you would you would make and a symbol for each of these measurements. So make sure whatever you write, you're including the description, you're including the symbol of the measurement. You definitely need a diagram. You also need to label parts of your diagram. So there are many ways to do this. So basically your objective is to confirm if total mechanical energy is conserved. That means you're going to measure total mechanical energy at one point, then you're going to measure total mechanical energy at the other point to see if they are the same. So in this case, they told you already, if you the initial gravitational potential energy, and you need to measure kinetic energy. Those are the things you need to measure. So different ways to set up. To me, the easiest way to set up is on incline. Because it's easy, you can, in the beginning, you can measure the height, you can measure the mass, then you can find out a, a potential energy. Then you can let the car go, measure the distance and time. From there, you find average speed. From average speed, you can find the final speed, so you can determine the kinetic energy over here. So you now you have two numbers, potential energy and the kinetic energy. energy. You are going to confirm if they are the same or not. Okay, so that's the diagram. To me, that's the easiest to set up. So you need to label this diagram. You need to measure the height. The description, this would be the height. This is the distance of the track. And you also need to measure the time of the track. So you can measure, here is a card with a mass M. You need to measure the mass in order to find potential energy. And here is the time. And obviously you can label the track also. So the procedure is to, first you set up the track on the incline, right? Then you measure the height of the uh, H2 of the incline using the meter stick. So you can, now you have the height. To find the potential energy, you also need to measure the mass. How do you measure the mass? With the electric, uh, electronic balance. You measure the height with the meter stick. So next, you, you're going to play the card on top of the incline and release it from rest. That's important. You have to indicate from the rest. Then you measure the time it takes for the car to go down the incline with a stopwatch, and you have to measure the distance. So those are the only things you need to measure. You don't have to tell people how you're going to do this. Those are, you just need to tell Tell, write down what you need to measure and what you use to measure it. Make sure you have your diagram, you have your symbols, have your description, your labeled equipment, and your road procedure and the diagram. So make sure you have all those. Next one, give a detailed account of calculation of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So you have two things. Now you have to do before and after. So you have four things. So you have gravitational potential energy before and gravitational potential energy after. Then you have kinetic energy before and kinetic energy after the transformation. In terms of quantities you measured, what, what have you measured? You measured H, you measured D, and you also measured T. So since there are four things, I just made a chart. 
U and K, gravitational and and the translational kinetic energy. Before the transformation, your energy is just mgh because the car is at rest, so kinetic equals to zero. After transformation, your U equals to zero because it's came to the bottom of the incline. And your kinetic energy is one half m vf squared. Pay attention, here is vf. We did not measure vf. You have to give the terms in the quantities you measured, so you you are not done here. How do you find VF? So what we measured is D and T. From there, we can find average speed. We also know average speed equals VI plus VF divided by two for constant acceleration. We know VI equals zero. So from here, we can find VF is just two D over T. Next part. After your first trial, your calculation showed the energy increased during experiment. Assuming you made no mathematical errors, give a reasonable explanation for this result. Why could it be? Why? What could make the energy increase? So one、uh, reason it could be you did not actually release the card from rest because it's actually pretty hard to release it from rest. That the mechanical part, your hand may move a little. You might have pushed a little bit. So usually. Because because the energy is increased, it could be caused by unintentional push. So that will result a greater energy more than mgh, the initial energy. Now on the other trials, your calculations show that energy decreased during the experiment. That's your calculation. Your calculation you used d and t, and why could that? Why is that? Assuming you made no mathematical errors, gave a reasonable physical explanation for the fact that average energy we determined decreased, including reference to conservative and non-conservative forces as appropriate. So you have to refer to the force, conservative and non-conservative force. So most of you know is because track that could be because the track has friction. So if there is friction on the track, total mechanical energy will decrease because friction is a non-conservative force. So friction takes energy away. That's it. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time.